But I mean, yeah, it's just day 81, chapters 9 through 12. Jehu anointed as Israel's king. The prophet Elijah came to one of the sons of the prophets and said, Tuck your mantle under your belt, take this flask oil with you, and go to Ramoth Gilead. When you get there, look for Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, 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 son of Nemeshi. Go in, get him away from his colleagues, and take him out to Nereem. Then take the flask oil, pour on his head, and say, This is what the Lord says, I anoint you king over Israel. Open doors and escape. Don't wait. So the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived, the army commanders were sitting there. So he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu asked, for which one of his is it? He answered, for you, commander. So Jehu got up and went into the house. The young prophet poured oil on his head and said, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anoint you over king, over the Lord's people of Israel. You are strike down the house of your master Ahab, so I may avenge the blood of shed, shed by the hand of Jezebel, the blood of my servants, the prophets, and all the servants of the Lord. The whole house of Ahab will perish, and I will wipe out all of Ahab's males, both slave and free, in Israel. I'll make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and all the house of Bishah, son of Ahijah. The dogs will eat Jezebel in the plot of the land at Jezreel. No one will bury her. The young prophet opened the doors and escaped. Jehu came out to his master servant, saying, So everything all right, right did this crazy person come to you? And he said to him, You know the sword, you know the sword in their answer. But they replied, That's a lie, tell us. So Jehu said, He talked to me about this. And and that and said, This is what the Lord says, I'll anoint you king over Israel. Each man quickly took his garment and put it under Jehuan bare steps. They believed the ram's horn proclaimed, Jehu is king. Then Jehu son of Jehoshaphat said, And then she conspired against Joram. Joram and all of Israel had been a remote Gilead and guard against King Aziel of Ram. But King Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds that the Ramians had inflicted on him when he fought against the Ram's king, Hazael. Jehu said, if you, if you commanders wish to make me king, then I, then don't let anyone escape from the city to go about in Jezreel. Jehu kills Joram and uh, Hazai. Jehu got into his chariot and went to Jezreel since Joram was laid up there and King Hazai of Judah had gone down to visit Joram. Now the watchman was standing up on the tower in Israel. He saw the Jews and mob approaching and shouted, I see a mob. Jerem responded, Choose a rider and ask him to meet them and, ha and have him ask, Do you come in peace? So the horseman went to meet Jehu and said, This is what the king asked, Do you come in peace? Jehu replied, From what do you have to do with the peace? Fall in behind me. The watchman reported, The messenger reached them but hasn't started back. So he stood, sent a second horseman who went in and said to him, this is what the king says, do you come in peace? Jehu answered, what do you have to do with peace? Fall behind me. Again, the watchman reported, you are after them, but it hasn't started back. Also, the driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi. He drives like a madman. Get the chariot ready, Jeram shouted, and they got it ready. Then King Jeram of Israel and King Ahaziah uh, of Judah set out. Each in his own chariot met Jehu in the plot of land in the mob uh, Jezreel. I when Jerem saw Jehu, he asked, Do you come in peace to who? He answered, What peace can there be as long as there is so much prostitution and sorcery from her mother Jezebel? Jerem turned around and fled, shouting, to Zai, It's treachery, Ahazai. Jehu blew his, drew his bow and shot Jerem between the shoulders. The arrow went through his heart and slumped down in his chariot. And he slumped down his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar, His aide, Pick up it and throw him on the plot of ground. Dwelling to Naboth the Jezreelite. Remember when you and I were riding by the side of the side behind his father Ahab, and the Lord uttered this pronouncement against us. It shows I saw blood on Naboth, the, the blood of his sons yesterday, and this is the Lord's declaration. So I will repay you on the plot of the slam. This is the Lord's declaration. So now, according to the word of the Lord, pick him up and throw him on the plot of rant, land. Then King Azai of Judah saw what had happened. He fled to, up the road toward the Beth Hagan. Jehu pursued him, shouting, Shoot him too. So they shot him in his chariot as at Gear Pass near Abelum. But he fled to him and then he go and died there. Then his servants carried him to Jerusalem in his chariot and buried him in his father's tomb in the city of David. It was the eleventh year a Jeram son of Ahab that Ahaziah had become king over Judah. Jude kills Jezebel. 
When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard about it. So she painted her eyes, fixed her hair, and looked down from the window. As Jehu entered the city gate, she said, Do you come peace and kill her up your master? He looked up toward the window and said, Who is on my side? Two or three, and I just looked down at him. Then he said, Throw her down. So he threw her down. And some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses. And Jehu rode over her. Then he went in, ate and drank, and said, Take care of this cursed woman and bury her, since she ate, since she's a king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they did not find anything but the skull, the feet, the hands. So he went back and told them, This fills the words were that he spoke through the servants Elijah the Tishbite. The plot of land at Jezebel, the dogs will eat up Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's corpse will be like manure on the surface of the ground, and plot of land Jezreel, so no one will be able to say this is Jezebel. Chapter 10, second chapter, Jehu kills the house of Ahab. Since the Ahab has 70 sons in Samaria, Jehu wrote letters and sent them to Samaria to the rulers of Jezreel, the elders and guardians of Ahab's sons, saying, Your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots, horses, fortified cities, and weaponries. So when this letter arrives, select the most qualified of your master's sons, sit on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. However, there's terrifying reason. Look, two kings can stand against him. How can we? So the overseer in place, the overseer of the city, the elders and the guardians sent a message to Jehu. We are your servants, and we'll do whatever you tell us. We will not make anyone king. Do whatever you think is right. And Jehu, Jehu, Jehu wrote a second letter, saying, From my side, and you will be bringing me the heads of your master's sons. At this time tomorrow, I'll judge real. All Sunday, the king's sons are being cared for by the city's prominent men. And the letter came to them, they took the king's sons and slaughtered them all seventy. And put their heads in baskets and sent them to Je. Wait, I'm um, sorry, spot. Wait, right, slaughter all seventy. Put their heads in baskets and sent them to Jehu at Jezreel. And the messenger came back and told them they brought the heads of the king's sons. The king said, "Pile them into, into heaps in the entrance to the city gate until morning." The next morning, when they went down to the gate, he said to all the people. You are innocent. It was I who conspired against my master and killed him. But who struck down all these people? Know then that not a word of the Lord spoke against the house that I have will fail. For the Lord has done what he promised through his servant Elijah. So Jehu killed all who remained at the house of Ahab in Jezreel. All his great men, close friends, and priests, leaving him no survivors. Then he sent out and went to Samaria. On the way, while he was at Beth, a kid of shepherds, Jehu and the relatives of King as I of Judah and asked, Who are you? They answered, We are Ahaziah's relatives. We come down to greet the king's sons and the queen's mother's sons. And Jehu ordered, Take them alive. So they took them alive and slaughtered them at the pits of Beth Aked. Forty two men didn't spare any of them. When he left there, he found Jehonadab, son of Rechab, coming to meet him. He greeted him and asked, Is your heart at one with mine? It is. Jehan did have replied. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and Jehu pulled him up in the chariot with him. Then he said, Come with us, see my, my zeal for the Lord. So he went with him in the chariot. When Jehu came to Samaria, he struck down all who remained in the house of Ahab in Samaria, and Samaria until he had annihilated his house according to the word of the Lord spoken to Elijah. Elijah. Jehu kills the Baal worshippers. Then Jehu brought all the people together and said to him, Ahab, servant. Ball a bit, but Jehu's serve him a lot. Now, therefore, summon me to all the prophets of Baal, and all servants, and all the priests. None must be missing, for I have great sacrifice to Baal. Whoever is missing will not live. However, Jehu was acting acceptably in order to destroy all the servants of Baal. Jehu commanded to concentrate a solemn assembly for Baal, so they called one. Then Jehu sent messengers throughout all of Israel, and all servants of Baal came. No one failed to come. They entered the temple of Baal. It was filled with men and others, and they said to the custodian of the wardrobe, Bring me out the garment for all servants of Baal. So they brought him out the garments. Then Jehu of Jana uh, of Rechab entered the temple of Baal, and Jehu said, Servants of Baal, uh, Look carefully to see that there are no servants of the Lord among you, only servants of Baal. Then when uh, other servants Sacrifice burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed eighty men outside and warned them. Whoever allows any of the men I'm placing in your hands will escape 
will forfeit. Um, press his life for theirs. When he finished offering the burnt offering, Jesus says to the guards and officers, Go and kill them. Don't let anyone out. So they struck him down with swords. Then the guards and officers threw the bodies out and went into the inner room of the temple ball. They brought out the pillar of the temple ball and burned it. They tore down this pillar ball. Then they tore down the temple ball and made it an election, which it still is today. A violation of Jehu's reign. Jehu eliminated Baal worship from Israel, but he did not turn away from the sins that Jeroboam son Bat caused Israel to commit, worshiping the gold casts that were in Bethel and Dan. Nevertheless, the Lord said to Jehu, Because you had done well in carrying out what is right in my sight, and done to the house of Ahab what was my heart, four generations your son will sit on the throne of Israel. Yet Jehu was not careful to follow the instructions of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. He, he did not turn from the sins that Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit. In those days, the Lord had begun to reduce the size of Israel. As the other feet of Israel lights through their territory, from Jordan eastward to the whole land of Gilead, Gadites, Reubenites, and Mesonites from Er, which is Arnon Valley, through Gilead and to Bashan. The rest of the events to Jehu's reign, belonging for all the accomplishments and all his might, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Jehu rested with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. His son Jehoash became king in his place. The length of Jehu's reign over Israel and Samaria was 28 years. Chapter 11, halfway through. Athalubia usurps the throne. Chapter 11. When Athalubia, uh, mother saw that her son's her son was dead, she proceeded to annihilate all her, the royal heirs. Jehoshaphat, who was King Jerem's daughter, and Ahaziah's sister secretly rescued Jehosh, son of Ahaziah, from among the king's sons who were being from the killed for, and put him in the one nurse of him in the bedroom. She was hidden from Ahaziah and was not killed. Jehosh was hiding with her in the Lord's temple six years while Ahaziah uh, reigned over the land. Ahaziah overthrown. In the seventh year, Jehosh Hoida sent for the commanders of the hundreds of the Heretes and the guards. He and them came in the Lord's temple, where he made a covenant with them and put them under an oath. He showed them the king's son and commanded them this way you're to do. The third of you come on duty in Sabbath and are provided protection for the king's palace. The third of you at the foundation. Gate and third and gate from behind the guards. You take turns providing protection from the, from the palace. Your two divisions that go off duty are the Sabbath to provide the king's protection at the Lord's temple. Put us around the king with weapons in hand. Anyone who approaches the ranks the ranks is to be put to death. Be with all the kings in his daily task. So the commanders of hundreds did everything the priest did Jehoiada commanded. They each brought their men. Those coming on duty of the Sabbath and those going off duty, and the kings of priest Jehoiada. The priests gave them commanders of the hundreds, King David's spears and shields, down the Lord's temple. Then the guards stood with their weapons and in hand surrounding the king. From the right side of the temple to the left side of the altar and by the temple. Jehoiada brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him testimony, and made him king. They anointed him and clapped their hands and cried, along with the king. When Jehoiada heard the noise from the guard and the crown, she went out to the people at the Lord's temple. She looked, and there was the king standing by the pillar according to the custom. The commanders and the trumpet trumpeters were by the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Uh, Tyla tore clothes and screamed, Treason, treason. Then the priest Jehoiada ordered the commanders of hundreds in charge of the army to take out her between the ranks and put her to death by a sword anyone who follows her. For a priest said she is not to be put to death in the Lord's temple. So they arrested her and she went through a horse entrance in the king's palace where she was put to death. Jehoiada's reforms. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord, the king, and the people that would be the Lord's people according to their covenant between the king and the people. So all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. Then they smashed the altars and images to pieces. Then they killed and tanned the priest of Baal at the altars. Then Jehoiada the priest appointed guards at the, for the Lord's temple. He took commanders of hundreds of the Karites, the guards, and all the people of the land. They brought them to the king to the Lord's temple. They entered the king's palace the way of the guards' gate. Then Jehash sat on the throne of the kings. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, for they put Athaliah uh, to death by the sword of the king's palace. Judas, King Joash. Chapter 12, the final chapter for today.
I am starting to doubt more and more that this live stream is going to go through. I'm going to have to post on my phone. That's mostly because it keeps on saying connections unstable. But I'm just really, really hoping that I don't have to post on my phone. But I mean, luckily I'm so glad I'm able to. Chapter 12, Jesus King Jehosh. Jehosh was seven years old when he became king. In the seventh year, Jehu Jehosh became king. He reigned 42 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Sibba. Sibia. She was from Beersheba. Throughout the time, the priest Jehoiada instructed him, to actually do what was right in the Lord's sight. Yet the high places were not taken away. The people continued sacrificing burnt and burning incense on the high places, preparing the temple. Then Jehosh said to the priest, All the dedicated silver brought to the Lord's temple, since the silver, silver from the vows, and all the silver voluntary get given for the Lord's temple, each priest will take from their assessor and repair or whatever damage is found in the temple. But, but by the 23rd of the year of the reign of King Josh, priests had not repaired the damage to the temple. So King Josh called their priest Jehoiada and other priests and asked, Why well, haven't you repaired the temple's damage? Since you haven't, don't take any silver from your assessors. Instead, hand it over for the repair of the temple. The so priests agreed that they had not received no silver from the people and not be the ones to repair the temple. Simple's damage. Then the priest Jehoi, Jehoi, the priest Jehoi took a chest, bored a hole in its lid, and set it before the altar on the right side at, 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 as one enters the Lord's temple. The priest who guarded the threshold puts, put the chest in all the silver that was brought by the Lord's temple. Whenever they saw this large amount of silver in the chest, the king's secretary and all the high priests would bag it up, tally the silver from the Lord's temple, they give it weighed silver for those doing the work. Those over saw the Lord's temple, they in turn pay it out to those working in the Lord's temple. The car the carpenters, the builders, and then the masons. The sun cutters would use it to buy a temporary and cord stone to repair the damage to the Lord's temple and for the expenses for the temple repairs. However, no silver bows, wicked trimmers, sprinkling basins, trumpets, or any articles of gold or silver are made for the Lord's temple from the contributions brought to the Lord's temple. Instead, it was given to those doing the work, and they repaired the Lord's temple with it. No accounting was required from the men who received the silver to pay those doing the work, since they worked with integrity. The silver was from the guilt offering, the sin offering was not brought to the Lord's temple, since it belonged to the priests. Jehosh and Judah took all the items concentrated himself and by his ancestors. Judah's kings, Jehosh, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Isai, as well as all the gold found in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the king's palace, and he took them to King Isaiah of Ram. Then Isaiah withdrew from Jerusalem. Joash assassinated. The rest of the events of Joash's reign, along with all his accomplishments, are in the historical record of these kings. Joash's servants conspired against them and attacked them at Beth Milion Milo on the road that goes down to Silla. It was the servant Josabad, son of Shemath, and Josabad, son of Shormer, who attacked him. He died and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And his son, Mazai, became king in his place. So that's all the reading for today. It starts out in chapter 9, talking about how Jehu first got appointed as king over Israel. And then how he goes and kills Ram and Asai, the kings of the other places. And so then Jehu causes Jezebel, the daughter, to die. But she got tossed out the window. And then he kills the entire house of Ahab. And then he kills all the ball worshippers because he got all the priests to, well, to come to that one place. And then they all got slaughtered at one time. And then they evaluated Jehu's reign and talks about Adahu lies observed the throne and how Athulah was all the throne. And then the Josh, Josh became king over Judah and then how they repaired the temple and the army invasion of Judah. And then Josh. Was that how Josh was assassinated? So that is all for today. So hope you've had an amazing day so far. Have an amazing rest of your day. Remember, God loves you. Goodbye.